He just hit him over the head. <laughs> Dude, this guy's hilarious, bro. Ah. Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another TV show reaction and commentary. Today, we're going to be hopping into Better Call Saul Season 4, Episode 7. This one is titled Something Stupid. Yeah, I'm so happy to be getting back into Better Call Saul. Every time I jump into this series, it's just refreshing. It's exciting. It's just something new. I wouldn't call it something stupid. And there's my joke for today. All right. So, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with these characters now that, again, it feels like Chuck's ripples are still being felt. You know, it's a lot more subtle because a good couple of episodes have happened ever since, you know, he decided to uh, set himself ablaze. But, um, yeah, just the the overall atmosphere and the tone of Better Call Saul is beginning to shift. We're starting to get into somewhat more of a um, villainous uh, stage here. And that's because we are literally taking more time with our villains into the life of crime, into all the business that happens within that area. And seeing how Jimmy is kind of finding himself through that. And that is going to be very important and how those ripples affect our characters because again kim hasn't faced any of that um i would say howard hasn't faced any of that you know and and other people around jimmy as well too but again i'm not complaining you know the fact that we're getting more um time with mike and gus and nacho and just introducing other story beats into the play here um, because yeah i mean i feel like the only story beat that was really happening on the crime side was obviously hector salamanca and then nacho's relation with him and him basically trying to take him out um, we've been building with that ever since what season three i want to say so we was cooking for three seasons and that was like the higher uh, realm or higher activity within the crime storyline so it's cool to see a newer element and that element being the building the foundation of the basement where jesse and walter you know had it all and we're i mean built the whole entire empire from the ground up um, we were talking about the laboratory there but yeah, it's also just really interesting seeing all these characters that are into the play here, whether they're going to last an episode or maybe several. I have no idea. But regardless, the time that is spent on them is precise. It's so perfect. It's just the right amount. And I love that at the helm of it, we got Gus and Mike being the, 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 the big the big ups in this operation and so i'm excited about that so there's a lot to pack in even though we are getting closer to you know uh, the end of season four i believe but it's again there's just so much information that is so well executed and so well directed and it's very mature with how they approach their characters and their themes and how all of this is swirling within uh, uh like a fish tank you know just watching this natural selection just happen <laughs> It's wild, right? It's wild, and I'm excited to see how um, all this plays out. And if we do get to see other fish come into play, I don't know. It's up to y'all, right? Uh, I I will say this, though. And I don't think this is a spoiler. I don't think this is was a spoiler, but someone did mention that there's another big fish coming in. That's why I said that comment. Someone did mention there's another big fish. I don't know who. I, 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 it can't be Walter, because this is like a prequel. So, I don't know. I don't know what comes into mind, but I'm excited to see none of the less. Like always, guys, if you want to be able to support this channel, the best way to do it is through Patreon. If you want to get early access and uncuts to all this stuff and many more as well, too. You can also support the channel by leaving a like, comment, and subscribe. And at the end of the day, you don't have to do any of those things. Just sit back, relax, get your popcorn and snacks as we hop into Better Call Saul. Yo, at first, I thought something was up with my TV, my monitor. I was like, I don't know what's happening. But I, I, I held it and I kept my faith. <laughs> I have a feeling they're going to do a cool little montage with this, maybe. Just showing all the days that are passing. 
I was correct. I love Breaking Bad's and Better Call Saul's montage. Or montages. <laughs> yeah, we left off with um, Kim basically saying, hey, I'm going to try this Mesa Verde thing out. And we're going to see what happens with that. And obviously, that's just going to push Jimmy to just be more and more into the life of crime. It's a shame, right? Because Jimmy was actually fighting for it. And not to say that Kim wasn't either, but, you know, it's just one of those causes and effects that just solidify. They helped solidify Jimmy's decision and just staying Jimmy, you know? Yep, we're starting to see it. The latencies. The lag. But they're still trying. They're still trying. I love these two, man. I really hate for something bad to happen. But because we don't see Kim or don't even hear about Kim in Breaking Bad, it just... I don't know. I just feel like we're getting closer and closer to that point, And I'm gonna hate it. Oh, wait, we're also seeing the bond between Jimmy and, um, I'm just gonna call him Big Black, man. <laughs> Those who know, you know. Alright, they basically are Rob Derdak, man. It's Big and Rob. Or Rob and Big. I love how they have, the sh like, the shot similarities. You know, with the box on the other end matching the fish tank on the other. That's a really cool way to just have different shots but similar comp compositions. Mm. Damn. That's... Damn, that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the audio goes out right when I do that and I can hear myself. <laughs> this is for the partner, corner office, lots of natural light, and that's great for your circadian rhythms. Uh, Damn, he's so good at acting, bro. You can just see the things that he is not saying while he's saying something. On his face, you can just see it. You can sense it. He wears it well. Stick a few potted plants the actor. around, make the place nice. <laughs> you know, I think his name is Bob Odenkirk, I think. <laughs> you were a lawyer, this would be a great place, right? If I was a lawyer? Nope. <laughs> big glass high rise. <laughs> he said big glass high rise. Tan ojada. There you go. Got the tapping. Esta persona está contenta? You got the tapping. That's so crazy. That is so insane. Just I'm getting goosebumps from just breaking bad moments and ah man. The compositions that are matching within my brain synapses. <laughs> I was wondering if he was doing that. <laughs> Wait, hold up. <laughs> is this dude doing this because, man. This is Jimmy McGill. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Great to meet you. Ron, this is Jimmy oh, McGill. Hi. Hey, Ron. Jimmy. Hey, I gotta say, I'm obsessed with your tie. He's, he's, he's being a really good sport about it, as you should, you know. Especially in this relationship. But, I, I mean, I can't. I can't imagine how difficult this is. He's putting on such a good front. That is indeed a nice office. <laughs> That's a good office. I gotta, I dig it. As I got older, I learned to love places like those, like offices like those. Not my preferred, but I've learned to like him. Wayne's is supposed to be amazing. I yeah. love that place. Or Carlsbad Caverns. 
I still think that Taos is number one. I love a ski trip. <laughs> listen, listen, for all my skaters out there, Carl's bad high school. All right? I, that's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to see if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Just Carl's bad high. Comment below if you know. <laughs> Aspen is like a nine-hour bus ride. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Nine hours. That, that is a long time to be sitting on a bus. <laughs> oh, my goodness, bro. Jimmy is just... <laughs> Jimmy... <laughs> Aspen, here we come! <laughs> come on, Rich! You're gonna love it! You know, it's, it's wild, because sometimes, you know, now that they're incorporating more of the crime elements and storyline, I'm like, damn, like, I really wanted to stick with Jimmy's story. But then when I'm, <laughs> you know, listening and watching the crime side, and then they end, I'm like, damn, I wanted to see more of that. So basically, also say is that I think they're balancing it well. The pacing is pretty solid. That's so crazy, man. There it is. There it is. I can't believe we are getting the behind the scenes of the lab. <laughs> That's almost a philosophical question. What I can tell you is that he's more responsive. He's making incremental improvements almost every day. This, this psychopath just wielding a freaking kitchen knife, man. Like, I know he won't do it. I know he won't just straight up Jason Voorhees slash her freaking head off, but that doesn't stop the aura he's putting out. <laughs> month before that, he couldn't respond at all. Or oh, his vital signs have improved. Also, I've been tracking his progress using the... Yeah, Gus is gonna... He's gonna pick up on that cup fall, like... He's going to be like, yeah, that's him. That might be him, all right. Yeah, <laughs> look at him. He's like, yeah, yep. <laughs> that's him. Yep. There's still some brain left in there. Hector's progress is very promising. With sustained intensive care, he may eventually learn how to talk and even walk again. Wow. Oh, no. Dude, dude Gus is... We should temper our expectations. Wow, Gus is freaking... I believe he's so. a monster, bro. He's a monster. He is purposely limiting the treatment so he can be in this vegetative state, but his brain... Is still the same. So he's basically just stuck. I didn't know Gus set that up. I just thought that that was just the unfortunate part of what happened to him. But Gus did that? That's such a new element of just of just evil, man. That's crazy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. It's even worse because they gotta live together. Yo, Mike was the one that called him out. He's like, he's, he is, he is taking care of a pack of pit bulls. Coming right up. I wonder if Kim just like is just driving by and sees Jimmy. <laughs> it's like, huh? Off uh, a drug dealer who got sprung today because he was using a drop phone that you sold him. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Use these things to sell drugs? What my customers do with the phones after they leave my possession, that's their business. Saul is Saul. Jimmy is literally the best person for this. Maybe this is why they need my phones. Maybe you're the problem. Okay, so as long as you make a buck, the whole world can just go in the crap. Yeah. And... Uh. <laughs> Man, this Robin Big setup is just everything.
He's a cop. <laughs> he just hit him over there. <laughs> Dude, this guy's hilarious, bro. Uh. How do you say bullshit? Mm. Bullshit. Yeah, that. <laughs> but really, you're one of us, Michael. One of us. One of us. One of us. I love that he calls him Michael instead of Mike. I think that's really cool. <laughs> and Mike is cool with that. Rest and relaxation. Precisely. This is what they need. R and R. Close, Michael. <laughs> these two are cool, man. <laughs> I've grown to really like these two right here. So unexpected. Uh, what, what do you mean? I'm a bounce. I got places I can go. And now, uh, no, that's not a good idea, Huel. Better than going in. <laughs> Yo, there's a lot of just relationships I am digging in this later half of season four. What on earth? You've been selling drop phones on the street? Kim, I, I just, if we could, uh, look, Kim. <laughs> wow, he's just, he's just bringing it up. He's just bringing it up. Oh, man, this is not it. This is not it. Stumble in there just for dramatic effect, and I have some thoughts on how to engineer that, but you get the gist. Next thing you know, case dismissed. Bars. <laughs> but not the bar he should be taking. <laughs> At some point, she has to say no. At some point, there's going to be a no. And um, tell me if there's anything I can do. Yep. Damn, you in the doghouse, fam. <laughs> you in the doghouse, my guy. Five other cases where civilians were accused of physical force against police officers, and not once were the defendants given anything close to this kind of jail time. Mm. They weren't repeat offenders. Man, I, I'm not going to lie. I love seeing Kim work, yo. <laughs> I love seeing Kim work, and I'm learning hella. I'm learning a lot. On the other, you have a professional thief who threw him to the ground. And our only witness is a scumbag, disbarred lawyer who peddles drop Ooh, phones to criminals. Wow. 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 Oh, man. That's frustrating. Jimmy, whatever you're doing, don't. Yeah, I know. But listen, I have a better way. Mm, okay. All right. That's a that's one hell of a way to <laughs> how to leave it off. I wasn't even expecting that. I didn't even catch the ending until now. Whole episode went by. <laughs> All right, everybody. We just got done episode seven, season four of Better Call Saul. Uh, Robin Big activities, man. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Robin Big activities. Um, Big slapped the crap out of a cop from behind with a bunch of sandwiches because he had his headphones in. Um, and now we are focusing on how he can either not go to jail or at least serve a little bit of time instead of like, what, a year and a half for doing something like that, which I do agree is a little excessive now that we have now that we see the the, the whole picture. Right. Um, so that's like an interesting development there. But I think um, but 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 OK, <laughs> I think below the surface um the deeper themes that are being tug of war with each other is definitely the relationship between Jimmy and Kim and just seeing how their occupations, their motivations and their love for one another can play this tug of war where they're completely in understanding with one another. And then it almost seems as if similar to the intro of this episode, they are separated, you know, that they're divided. And that makes a lot of interesting conflict here. Um, those that are good and those that are really bad. And I'm excited to see those grow alongside with the development on the crime story, like, you know, with Mike and um, the demolition of the lab and Gus and Hector and just seeing that Gus was actually the one that hindered uh, Hector's development on purpose because he doesn't actually want to save him by the way he wants him to 
experienced probably the most defenseless, vulnerable uh, position possible for him. And we know why. But just again, relating it to what Gus told about the story of the, the whatever type of animal he said was stealing his fruit or his food and then just keeping it alive. It, it's very psychopathic tendencies and he's a very psychopathic dude <laughs> oh man and, and i didn't clock him in for that i think in breaking bad but now that we're getting a little bit of backstory and little elements to who he is i'm looking at the gestures because at first i thought the gestures were a facade and they are to a point they can be when out in the collective but now the gestures that he does and the movement that he does is so much more vicious and it's so much more primal whereas i thought like let's say for instance relating it to animals where i thought that facade was for defense it's almost as if he's he's flaring his teeth he's constantly flaring his teeth it's like um i've read somewhere when apes you know obviously you know they they, they get big and of course you want to rustle and tussle you know they get big start beating chest and all that good stuff but another thing that they do is that they grin you know um they they flare their teeth they show their fangs and i'm realizing that the what i thought was a defense mechanism is actually just gus flaring his teeth because he's truly that dude and that is uh that's that's a whole other element and again just goes to show like walter just being a straight up g and like get rid of that monster but damn this is all really exciting i can't wait to get into the next episode for all the patreon members if i'm like a little different in the next episode that's because i have to go and get a haircut so uh i'll see all the patreon people in a few it's gonna feel like seconds to y'all but for everybody else i'll see y'all next week stay healthy and stay hydrated because we are just getting started purple jacket pocket full of weed everything that i should ever need Grab some matches cause they give them free Just like my time Hair pulled back in the backseat